Hey, what's up guys? It's Bronson. This is the 10th video for the channel. So I just want to take a moment to thank all of you guys for the ongoing support. Today we're going to be tattooing some more black and grey realism with this dark styled horse portrait. This video is absolutely packed with pro tips that you can apply into your own tattooing. And I'll be sharing my thought process throughout the video. So be sure to make note of anything that might be useful for you. So let's get into it. So starting off this tattoo, the detail in this section is quite tight and it's not going to make for a very productive tattoo session if I get trapped into small motions and small detail so early into the session. So I'm trying to approach this area with my 13 round mag, really mapping in our shapes and tones. It's really important with some of these more detailed tattoos to put a little bit of thought into your workflow. I know that there's a lot of detail coming up later in the session, so I don't want to be exhausted by the time I get there. I'm just starting off by giving myself a simple task of creating a nice value and saturating the skin well. And you can see from this part in the video, uh, my hand speed is quite fast, really trying to softly pack in and create this gradient. And also I'm working with kind of a darkish mid-tone here leaving my black area because I, I don't want to be overusing that black and that's something that I'm going to be talking about soon um, so I've used my dark or my mid-tone first and then pushing my black into that I think it makes for a much nicer look as well as long as you're not contaminating too much of your tone so I do use a white wash not a black ink drop so the whitewash can be contaminated with your light tone so just being careful of that but i really think that this is going to be a huge breakthrough in my own work recognizing a bit of a a bit of a flaw or maybe not even a flaw but something that can be improved in my work i would quite often jump in with my blacks first and it is easy to make a black look light or like a mid-tone especially if you have some skill with a mag but I know that that's not the true tone in relation from the reference to the ink palette. So really just trying to step back and always improve my own work. Um, I think that this is going to be a huge breakthrough and, and it has been as well from, from the weeks that I've been using it. And there's so many ways to make a great tattoo. But the look that I'm pushing for is really that perfect realism. And as your realism gets better, you're going to want to saturate more because your tones are going to become more true. So to really have your highlights and your dark areas accurate to your reference, you have to create more saturation in the skin. And if your tones aren't accurate, your image will get lost. So that's been such a big push for me to make truer tones. It was really a challenge that I set out for myself. And I've recently been putting in so much work and thought into what I'm doing with my inks and always asking myself, what can I do to, to make a better pigment um, throughout the whole tattoo, something more accurate. And I think if any tattooist is actively making that decision to really always be thinking about creating the truest and the nicest pigment, um, in relation to their reference it's really going to help their work no matter what level you're at if you're really making sure that you are thinking and asking these questions to yourself you're going to create a much nicer result and i do just want to point out that if it is a black area i am still going to use black so i'm not saying don't tattoo black where it's black because that is such a fundamental anchor to any tattoo and to creating the contrast so you need black i'm not saying don't use it but i'm using a whitewash ink set so sometimes that whipped out black or a muddy mid or dark tone 
doesn't translate as well as it might with your standard kind of ink drop or percentage of just a wash down black. And now you're going to see this kind of secret step that I'm using in my tattooing at the moment, especially pushing away from this kind of overused black and almost doing the opposite. I'm adding a light opaque to my wash. Here I'm using the opaque in its true form, but quite often throughout the tattoo, I am using it with my light and mid tones as well to really create a super accurate um, pigment. I think I will create another video to show you guys how I am using it and making these tones. So I'm not using this as you usually would an opaque set. All I'm using is this light tone to keep my whitewash set that I'm using kind of alive really. You'll notice that if you pour your whitewash inks out, your light tone and inks with these heavy whites, that white sets after about two hours in the bottom of your ink cap. Um, so it's not very good for these longer sessions. So dipping into this opaque light tone, I'm able to keep my whitewash set looking nice and really consistent throughout the whole tattoo. I think that there's a lot of benefits to doing this. One is you're able to pack that tone a lot more with it staying in its true tone kind of range. It's not going to extend a light tone out to being really dark. I find that it gives you more opportunity throughout your tattoo to make some unique decisions. Um, you can choose to bring a little bit more life to your tattoo by, or even separation by using more of this opaque tone. You do get that slight chroma in there um, compared to that dirty black and gray look. So it, you, can, you can make a background separated from your portrait or an effect wash over your image and it makes it easier for the viewer of the tattoo to see that separation and decision that you've made. But my main goal is to be creating nice black and gray tattoos with this whitewash. I don't want to be making opaque tattoos. So I am wanting to bring this opaque tool into my tattooing more just to keep my whitewash really activated the whole time. And basically how I'm doing that is I'm still dipping into my whitewash value that I'm wanting and I will fill my cartridge up 98% with it and then I will dip that into my opaque to kind of bring that life back into the whitewash. If I feel like it's too strong I can then dip it into my water or I can dip it into the same value from my whitewash or slightly darker to create that, that tone and that value that I'm wanting. But I'm finding that this step is really creating the ultimate whitewash and something that's activated the whole time. I don't see how it will ever really be possible to have a whitewash where your white isn't setting at the bottom of your ink cap. So I think that this step um, and this tool is, is great to add into your tattooing. And I think something that's quite cool about it too is it really for this YouTube channel, it really does make that tone much more visible for you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, you can see the exact tone that I'm using because it is that slight opaque. It's like a wash down opaque whitewash, you know, that variation. But it actually allows the viewer to really see what tone I am putting into the skin. Um, and obviously these tones, it will heal up just a touch lighter than that value is that I'm using. So obviously keep that in mind if you are wanting to take this step on and feel free to um, ask me any questions about this kind of new method that I'm trying. And just make sure that the order that you're using this opaque in is that you're filling your cartridge with your black wash or your white wash first and then adjusting it with a touch of your opaque. You still wanna keep this as a black and gray tattoo I'm not trying to use this method to create um, opaque tattoos in any means, so I still want this to be a traditional black and grey tattoo, but I want that whitewash to be activated the whole time. And a great step for kind of warming into this method would be to really water down that opaque a little bit as well. But anyway, back into this tattoo, you can see I've done most of my smoke in the bottom of this tattoo now. And continuing just to map through this new area with my mag 
starting off with my dark mid tones and then I can use my other values and leaving my black tool last I'm really really enjoying that um, having smaller hits and really accurate hits of black not extended out I think it doesn't translate well with a whitewash and it's been so much fun really trying to to think and create the nicest tone and the truest value that I can and here I'm just using some of that watered down opaque tone to really play with some of these layers of the horse kind of moving through the smoke and using it right up to the horse as well so I'm able to saturate really heavily with this ink as well and now just mapping in some of my background some of these darker tones getting my forms all mapped in and once I finish this area I can start mapping in more of this horse and the more important stuff although the smoke is looking really nice and we're just using a nine round mag to get in some of these channels and kind of flicking it out on that one edge there too leaving that shape really open with my black and you can see I've made some decisions to keep some of the smoke really quite opaque to create some more separation in the image so that the viewer can see what is the smoke and what is the horse on some of this um, section where it could be confused so I've pumped quite a bit of opaque into the smoke and washing over some of these horse layers it's really nice being able to have a tool that can um, create that contrast in between the two images almost as if it's a new color separating one area from another and you can see here making adjustments with my black tone over these mid tones I feel like it's much more accurate I can control that depth and the sharpness that I want over that mid tone and then I can see the contrast that I want to create whereas if I lay that black first that decision's already been made and I can't go back on that and create a mid tone necessarily darker without ruining my image and now I'm using a five round shader to kind of get some of these lines just roughly scratched in. I don't want them to be super bold lines throughout the whole part, perhaps starting off really dark and flicking out a little bit. But it's quite funny, I think that this is the first line I've ever pulled on camera. Just some small ones, but everything else has been magged really, even, even a lot of other lines. I've just created with the side of my mag but here I did really want that black to be really bold on the edge of this horse here so I can saturate fully up to it you can see at the moment I've left almost a white key line uh, like outside the horse but I do end up saturating right up to it because I think that distance was just set a little bit too harsh so I saturate right up to it so I'm glad that I did line there to create that separation still and now for some of these softer lines using a nice mid-tone and my 13 round mag this is the traditional me again lining with my mags and it's so nice though just having that variation of being able to put in those lines and then come down and do a bit of shading and saturating this area without dipping into any different ink or changing my needle so I think it really does speed up my whole tattooing process especially when we get into areas like the ones that are about to come up now where I have a lot of small precise kind of folds and cloth or these layers of rope a nine round mag if you can comfortably move it through these areas they give you that variation of being able to change your line width by tilting your mag and also still being able to get a really crisp line if you're just singling out a needle from it so it really allows you to move through some of these tricky areas a lot faster than you traditionally would with I think a liner and and you might think that a liner will make it more accurate but then I feel like the liner steps it away from being realism sometimes because you overuse a tone or it's all the same sharpness with my mag I'm able to really step away from a sharpness and a tone by being like gentler or packing it more or singling out a needle I just think there's more variation 
Now you can do some of these steps with a liner, but I just think not, not quite as many. Um, obviously you can still adjust the tone slightly with a liner if you're a little bit softer. But I feel like I can just move so fast through an area that would really stump a lot of people. Yeah, so even this tattoo, it is a tattoo done on a seven hour session, but we designed in the morning, we sized it, like I had to wipe the first stencil off, reprint another one, we had a lunch break, um, so you know it might be like six hours of tattooing on the skin so it's quite fast for getting through all this work and all this detail and every tattoo or video that I've made it has been part of just my very standard day session on my normal clients you know I'm not um, shining things up for the YouTube channel I'm not doing like 12 hour sessions and like damaging my clients skin and just going like all out everything is one session no kind of touch-up sessions or a second pass like I'm just filming what I'm creating on my clients which I hope is creating something quite unique and something that everyone is able to watch these videos and perhaps take something into their own tattooing or learn something or even just change the way that they're thinking about tattooing and just trying to better the, the stuff that they're doing I think that's probably the biggest thing I want to achieve for this channel is just to create a space where people are made to think about what they're doing in their process um, to break down every aspect of their tattooing and make improvements or even just question things and put more thought into their tattooing I think we'll have a really positive outcome for everyone but anyway, back into the tattoo, I'm kind of mapping out this right area kind of quickly so I can get onto this side of the horse where this is like the money side of the tattoo anyway. The other side is kind of just cloth, right? So getting in all these important shapes of the horse and mapping this black section before I start on some of this more fiddly stuff. So really just making sure I'm getting all these grooves in right, packing all this nice and black, and the same with that edge here. I really want this to be quite sharp and pop out from any background that I'm gonna create behind it. So making sure that this is a really nice true black tone. And using a mag carefully on some of these tighter areas is a great way to speed up spots like this where it's so dense in detail to kind of make it easier on your brain and just relax a little bit. I kind of enjoy getting in with a 13 round mag and smashing in some of these shapes. Some of it's packed solid and some of it is just mapping, creating an area where I have some variation and where I can make decisions. So I'll just softly put edges um, even on this part where it's really black and then I can choose if I want to sharpen it up later with my mag or make it ultra sharp with a liner it just creates an opportunity for decisions to be made instead of just if you go in and line it everything's really solid it's hard to see a separation from the horse and some of this headgear on it and things like that and how nice do these kind of opaque whitewashed tones look. I think that they're great and, and really accurate to look at as well when I'm tattooing. I can see how everything's going to work and being able to pack that tone really well I think creates a much truer heel as well. If you can fully pack that in really well it's not going to change too much. It might lighten up a little bit but not as much as some traditional black and grey styles would. And now just dropping down to a 9 mag and always wanting to use a mag before stepping to my liner for a speed thing as well. If I go in and, and start lining all of this, it can just get a little bit tricky and then it's hard to create that variation like I spoke about before. The 9 mag allows me to kind of cut in some of these channels of the headgear, get things mapped in really nice and leaving my sharpest points for this liner till last. And also leaving these tight kind of small circle shapes for my liner as well. There's no point me trying to get the mag curved around them when the liner is going to do it more effectively. So making those decisions as well helps me decide when I want to use my liner or my mag is the shapes that I'm trying to make. 
and then step down into this background area to see how everything's looking against the background before I get in and use my five round shader I think it is and it's a great needle for being really solid um, with, with the actions that you're doing all of this is obviously like quite crisp the shapes that I'm wanting to make so having something quite bold it creates that that like purpose and everything you're doing everything you touch with this needle is meant to be there whether it is or it isn't it's going to look right because of the sharpness there and the boldness of it and shaping in this eye as well I remember when I was doing this tattoo just how many times I hit the black in this eye wanting to really make sure that it was super solid obviously without overworking it but I really really wanted if anything's going to heal super solid for it to be this little area so I hit it with my nine get all that shape in and then I do remember making a pass or two with a five round shader to really make that solid I find sometimes the mag can sometimes heal as if it's not fully saturated in this small area so it's quite nice to pass over eyes and stuff with a five round shader where you know that that's really in there and hasn't missed any spot you can't see now using this five round shader you can kind of see the speed and and the shapes that i'm making on how i'm trying to effectively work through this area i try just look once and then you know tattoo the information that i gain that i don't want to look and do a one millimeter movement and then keep doing that and then wiping in between your stencil is going to disappear and all the rest of it so I do want to grab the information from the reference um, make smart decisions of my own and try and lay as much information into the skin as I can in, in kind of these passes that I'm making I'm sure we've all had times where we've spent like two hours also in a really small area and just been caught off guard by that so this is a great way to prevent that from happening and i think if you understand or know that the problem is there you make a lot of smart decisions to get through these tricky areas and and overcome all of those problems and most of the time it is the the harder areas of the tattoo are the more rewarding sections once they're perfected and also they're more high risk eh? I think if you muck up these areas the whole tattoo is kind of gone um, overworking it or if you focus on your reference too much then you might perhaps take out some of the negative space that's really important or make something the, the sections of white too small and just not effective so yeah just being aware of all these decisions now you can see using a seven round liner again it's um, you could use a five round liner I think a lot of you looking at this tattoo um, this area is really small like look at the size of my finger or the cartridge next to it I think a lot of you guys would like to use a five in this area but a seven I think puts a lot more purpose into everything that you do fives can sometimes look a little bit scratchy but the the sevens if you put a little bit of weight behind it it creates something really bold and as you just saw i can lightly flick it out create a little bit of inconsistency which is great for realism um, there is places for fives but i think if you can use a seven then use it i think it's a great tool for realism tattooing and it is part of my um, daily lineup really of the cartridges that I use and you can see with the liner like I talked about earlier I am focusing with the liner I want to create my my rounder shapes and also obviously quite sharp um, shapes and, and dark areas as well so yeah a lot of my sharpness and my rounder shapes that's where I want my liner and if it's not like that even if it's a small area I'm still pretty keen to try get the mag in there if it's not working I can just pull the liner out and here kind of creating that shape I'm making sure most importantly that I'm not closing in on my white highlights you know I could do anything in this area honestly I could create the randomest texture and it's gonna look like perfect 
as long as I don't close in the white highlights, if I oversaturate it, the whole area is ruined. I need to create something that's looking like that crisp metallic kind of horse headdress. And it is these small over detailed areas that tones do get mistaken, overused, and your your white highlight areas can get made too small or or just oversaturated in general, ruining the area. You do need to create some negative space in these areas to really show that everything has a lot of purpose and no mistakes have been made really. And after this rough map in phase, I'm able to take all the decisions that I've made and make them all definite. Perfecting some of these shapes that I've made and packing in my true black tones. And I think after this step's been done, you're really able to relax a little bit more and go through and actually start tattooing using some of your light and your mid tones and actually be able to have some fun with the piece. I feel like sometimes these pieces where things are so definite and small and detailed, it can take a little bit of the fun out of the piece where you actually get to make some decisions, especially when I'm trying to work so hard and put a lot of effort into creating these nice values and tones with my inks. And some pieces don't really allow you to, to have large areas to stretch out these kind of um, new skills and stuff like that. But now that this area is looking more finished and starting to get quite saturated, I am able to go through and kind of ticking off these final steps, making some adjustments with some mid-tones over some of these negative spaces to create a little bit more detail and close off some of these bigger white channels, you know. I still want it to be quite saturated in detail as well. So I want a little bit of inconsistency and breaks in some of these kind of materials going over the horse's face, which is going to give the illusion of it being even more detailed. And also, once I start tattooing up a little bit further, you can see the effectiveness in how I'm using my liner really trying to get in as much as I can with one pass even without wiping I'm trying to just tattoo all the correct shapes and get all of these lines in because I know that even from a quick look at my reference I understand what's going on and I'm actually thinking about the form as well and the way that things are all layering and stacking up on each other and making sure that most importantly the white kind of channels and and shapes that i have they're all really clear and crisp so when i put a white highlight into them it's actually going to pop if you don't have the correct kind of sharpness around that white tone you are going to be affecting how much that white really impacts the piece and now doing the main here um, i do jump to kind of getting in a little bit of this background so i am keeping the white parts of the mane really visible and then I'm also able with that background there I can see how much of I want it to wash back into the background so the mane isn't looking 2D it has these individual layers of some parts being more forward than others. This is quite a cool clip kind of showing my natural hand speed on creating some nice shape and direction with with the black and the 13 round mag and then i go through and i kind of see where my main and really deep parts of this texture and tone is and lay that first but also considering the direction that i want to be kind of seen in the reference there so just moving my mag in that direction while mapping in these kind of channels of this black value and then I can go through and saturate it with the other tones that I need to over the top of it. And kind of repeating that process on this side of the piece as well. Apart from we had mapped in this side earlier. So now I'm using a darker mid-tone to work out of these deep shadows. But again, I'm just trying to do the same thing and focusing on direction first and then my level of saturation last. And you can see here, I'm kind of setting the sharpness on this hood here so making sure that this is all the right distance forward in relation to the horse as well so that everything's sitting at the levels that it should be 
mapping in some of this final stuff and then finding a little bit of a darker tone as well just to keep this area a little bit interesting making sure that there is kind of that gradient variation there and then i can go through and start saturating the area more with these unique whitewash tones and then moving through the piece with these really light tones adding the correct level of saturation to the piece before i start my white highlights and it's really important to have a lot of saturation through your piece so that the right areas are standing out. And now that we're onto our white highlight, there's one thing I kind of wish I did straight away in these highlights is I've really found that my other machine is smashing in liners a lot better. I'm not too sure if it's just my injector is a little bit older, mags, it's like beautiful. But then liners, I feel like it's a little bit inconsistent. So I'm seeing some of that now while I'm packing these whites that um, my Dragonhawk machine is lining a little bit better than my um, injector at the moment, or quite a bit better actually. But perhaps that's that four millimeter stroke there as well. So I wish that I kind of hit these whites in with something a little bit punchier. I still got the tone in fine, I just think it could have been a little bit faster and maybe solider as well. This is a seven round liner, so I think it should have been kind of acting a little bit better than this. And it is a good cartridge too. But moving through and packing in these whites, and it's kind of like I worked really hard to make all these little spots and now the piece is finally coming together. And I love whites looking like this. They're really sharp, sitting sharply in these highly saturated areas. I think that this is about as effective as white gets. And one really useful tip for using white and how to apply it a little bit better is obviously make sure that you're using a good brand of white. That is the most important step. But then I want you to tattoo it more like a color, like almost pretend that the white is a red and it's gonna need a little bit more time and perhaps like a pass and a half on every area. When you're making these sharp little dots, do hang it in the skin for a second, you know? There's a few real-time clips here, including this one, so I hope that it gives you a good judgment on how to use the white. I'm tattooing kind of slow, but I am keeping the needle moving, making sure that it's like effectively getting into the skin. And I'm not afraid to double hit one of these areas to make sure that that saturation level is good. And also it's important, since I use so much white in such a small area, I almost have to phase out of that spot. So I'm making sure to add a little bit of white in some surrounding areas like these ropes and even sections of the main so that the white isn't just randomly stopping it is kind of phasing out from that important area almost like a percentage wise you know i've used 100 percent in that head area where i want a lot of um the the viewer's attention and then i want to phase out from that into these less important areas but still something to stop that just dramatically stopping and i don't want to use white through the whole piece so i think this was a good way to do that and blend out this white. But now this is the tattoo complete, so we can kind of kick back and have a look at the finished result now. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you would like to see in the upcoming videos. I'll see you guys next time.